Hey guys, uh, what we're going to be doing today is module 3.1. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is sequence and series. And what we're going to do is looking at a new form on how to write an equation. So what we've been looking at is explicit. You might not know this word or you've actually been using it. But explicit just basically means if I give you an equation like y equals 2x plus 3, I can give you any value for x and you can uh, find a specific solution to a term for a certain solution I plug in. So uh, in the past we've used uh, like y equals mx plus b and last year you learned about functions and with uh, arithmetic we usually use like f of x or a sub n. So we're going to go over all of these today and tomorrow we're going to look at the second part of this. But what we're going to be doing is 3.1 um, Warm up and 3.1 lesson today. And when we're all done, you guys can go ahead and start your RSG for the day. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this. It says solve the problem by your preferred method, use multiple representations, show how your solution relates to the picture, and how you have arrived, this to, arrived at your solution. So if we've looked at this, we have one dot five dots, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine dots. And we can kind of see the pattern that each time we're increasing by a certain amount. And I'm adding four to each of the previous terms. So it says describe the pattern that you see in the sequence of the figure above. And what I personally see is we are now it says describe the pattern, so we really want to use the image. We are adding four dots to the previous pattern. And this can be seen by um, adding uh, like one additional dot per corner. So that's what we're doing. We're adding one dot per corner. And so pretty much, so if you have your center dot, then the second one is we added these four. So if I kind of like color coded these, we added these four from the previous one. The new stage is I would have been adding these four. And then the next stage, I would add another four. Excuse me, at three minutes, I would add another four on each end. So assuming that the sequence continues in the same way, how many will be there at three minutes? Well. Similar as before, so let me just go ahead and take a little snipping tool here so I can show you uh, visually. So if I have this, here are the previous here are the previous dots. And this was at the end of two minutes. And if I just continue this pattern of what I said is after three minutes, what we would do is add an additional four dots, one on each corner. So two, three, four, and that would be a total of 13 dots. Now, how many are there at 100 minutes? Okay, well, a few things here. I know from the previous one that I am always adding four. So I started with my initial, then it says at one minute, and then at two minutes. So it's saying at zero minutes I started with one dot and then at one minute there were five, two minutes there were nine, three minutes there were thirteen and that same pattern continues. Oops, it's not writing. At thirteen, uh, at four, excuse me, at three minutes there's thirteen. So once again I am adding four dots. So I know that at a hundred minutes I can use an explicit formula. I can plug this into my formula I'm about to create and figure out the total amount of dots. So basically what it's saying is, well, if I started off with one and I'm adding four each minute and I want to have a hundred minutes, well, I know my total dots would be 400 that I have added plus my initial dot to have a total of 401. Now it says how many dots are there at t minutes? We're going to be using this as function notation. So 
the total amount of dots as a function of t is represented by, I add an additional four dots per minute plus the original one that I had. So that's it, my mine in uh, explicit formula in function notation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a little different method here. Let's see what happens here. Let's count these dots. So this is uh, 3.1. So I want you to realize here, guys, this was more so of a linear equation. We were adding four dots each and every time. Uh, this is what's called an arithmetic sequence. We're just basically adding four. Now let's go ahead and look at a different one. So when we scroll over here, I started off at 3. And then I had one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six dots. So I think I just added three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, now I have twelve. So I didn't, I didn't add three to the previous one. So I thought I'm like, oh, I'm at three. Now I'm at six. I added three. But then I went from instead of going from six to nine, I went from six to twelve. Interesting. Let's continue this process. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. <laughs> I have 24 blocks. And some of you might be, oh, I'm not actually adding at all. I'm actually multiplying the previous stage by 2. So over here, I go from 12 to 24, and then after 4 minutes, if I were to count all these, I would have 48. So I'm multiplying by 2 again. So on the previous warm-up, we were adding 4 to each stage. Here, I'm multiplying the previous stage by 2 to get to my current stage. Now, it says describe and label your pattern of a change you see in the above sequence of this figure. Well, what we did is, let's start with our initial. I started with 3 blocks. And what we did is we doubled our blocks from the previous stage. And we can use stage, or in this, the context of this was from the previous minute. So assuming that the sequence continues in the same way, how many dots would there be at five minutes? Well, we were at four minutes. And remember, what we do is to get to the next set of minutes. So I'm at four minutes, so the next one would be five minutes. All I do is I double my previous stage to get to my current stage. So if I just doubled this by two, 48 times two is 96. So assuming the sequence continues at the same way, how many would be at uh, five minutes? And we just kind of showed it up there. What I did is I took the previous stage, multiplied it by two to get to my current stage of 96. So it would be 96 dots. So now what we're going to do is look at this word called recursive formula. This is what is brand new to us right now this word right here of recursive formula. What a recursive formula is, it's another way to write um, a formula. And it's basically saying, if I were to like look at a ladder, ladders go up one step at a time. And a recursive formula is kind of like a ladder. Instead of jumping from one ring of the ladder to the next, you need to go step by step by step by step. And it kind of just shows you the pattern one step at, at a time. And this is how we set up all recursive formulas. I'm going to show you how um, your book will do it, your notes will do it. I'm going to show you how CCA does it and how we're going to be doing it mostly in class, written in function notation. But uh, some people use, and if you like YouTube this or Google it, a lot of people use A sub N. They mean the same exact thing. So let's focus with this. This is how recursive always works. We're going to write the function of X is equal to, and then what we are going to do is have our previous term. And our previous term, which we'll write in function notation shortly, 
or as of a function shortly. But you always take your previous term, and in this instance, what we did was we multiplied. We multiplied by our growth factor. So what does that look like the way what we just did? Well, to get to my current term, so whether it was one minute, two minutes, three minutes, what we did is we looked at the previous solution. So that was uh, the previous solution, which was f of x minus 1. This minus 1 is what the previous part. So to get to my current term, I look at the solution of my previous term, and I'm going to multiply that by my growth factor. And in this instance, we are multiplying both sides by 2, or excuse me, or the previous side by 2. Okay? Like I said, some people write this as like a sub n. So it's to get to a, my current term, so a sub n, what I do is I look at my previous term, oh, there's no parentheses in this one, which is just a sub n minus 1, and I would multiply that by 2. Like I said, here let me underline this one in blue. This is what we're going to see like on YouTube or if you Google recursive. But in green, in CCA, in your homework, in our class, we're going to be using this, this version, okay? So this is going to be our in-class version. We're just going to leave it more so in function notation, okay? So the guys, this is your first look at recursive form. So if I said write this pattern in recursive form, it basically is saying I started off with 3. How did I get to my next? Well, we started off at 3 and we went to 6. How do I get to 12? We'll look at your previous answer, which was 6, times it by 2, and we get to 12. Well, how do I get to 24? Look at your previous solution, which was 12, multiply that by 2 to get to 24. Now there's one more piece I need here. I'm going to squeeze it down here. You need to tell me where we started at. So when you look up here, where did I start off at? Was my initial value at 1 minute, at 0 minute, at 5 minutes? You always need to tell me your starting value. Not your starting solution, but basically your initial x value. Okay. So what we started off at, well, we said we started off at 0 minutes, and at 0 minutes I had 1 dot. Nope, not 1 dot, wrong problem. Um, I had uh, 3 dots. So at zero minutes, I had initial start off at three dots. That just knows. That's just so I know where to start doubling. Same idea, guys. Over here, we would write a of zero equals three. That just tells me, oh, that's where we started off at. Okay. So if you were to graph this, this would graph an exponential equation. It starts off slow and goes really, 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 really fast. So how do we write? How do we write these? Well, an explicit formula, just in general, would be the f of x is equal to your initial. It's basically like your f of 1 or f of 0. So your f of 0 I'm not even going to write the f0. Um, I'm going to write your initial times it by your growth factor to the x power. So think about this previous one. If I had f of x, excuse me, if I had f of 0, I knew that was 3. f of 1 was say, oh, take our initial 3 and we're going to double it. Okay? Uh, f of 2, which says, hey, look at the previous solution, which would have been 3 times 2, and we're going to double that. Same idea, f of 3 would say, hey, look at your initial value, which was 3. Look at the previous ones, which was 2 times 2, and I want you to double that. When you see this, you can start to see that, oh, this is f of 0 is equal to 3 
times 2 to the 0 power. This right here, f of 1, is 3 times 2 to the first power. This right here, f of 2, is equal to 3 times 2 to the second power. And you're really beginning to see these now. So 3 times 2 to the third power. If you continue this pattern, hopefully you can see what the explicit formula is. The explicit formula is f of x is equal to essentially your f of 0, your initial start value, which was 3, times your growth factor. What am I always doing to the previous stage? And that is 2 to the power of x. Okay, so one more time, this would be f of x is equal to your f of 0 times your growth factor to the x power. That is what happens when your value starts off at 0, when your initial value starts off at 0, so 0 minutes. I do, in blue, want to give you a little hint, though. Sometimes you don't start off at 0. Sometimes you start off at 1. And what this would look like is f of x is equal to 3 times 2, and then it would be x minus 1. This occurs when your initial value starts off at 1. So f of 1 equals 6. So we would pretend, let's say, if we looked at this original problem and they didn't give us an initial, they said let's start off at 1 minute, that's the case. That is when we would have something that looks like f of 1 equals, uh, excuse me, f of x equals 3 times 2 x minus 1. This x minus 1 means we did not start at 0, we started at 1. Okay, so hopefully this is a good, nice warm up for you guys. We're going to do 3.2 tomorrow in class. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, and then we'll go ahead and begin the lesson tomorrow. So you still have plenty of time in class, so what I would like you guys to do is go ahead and start RSG 3.1, and hopefully you guys can finish that with no homework tonight. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.